Hey guys, what's up? It's Fern. Thank you so much for joining me for another planty video. So today we are going to be talking all about my philodendron El Choco Red. Now I used to do a lot more care videos featuring specific plants and I don't know why I kind of fell out of doing that, but I have not done one for a long time. So I figured that I would bring it back with my fave right here, my beautiful philodendron El Choco Red. Yes, this plant is incredible, one of my absolute favorites in my collection. And I do get a lot of questions about how I specifically care for it, so I thought I would answer those today. So I figured it would be nice to kind of give some background information on the plant in general. So I did a lot of digging and it was very difficult for me to find um, information regarding the history of this plant. I do know that it originates from the uh, Choco region of Colombia and Ecuador, I believe, which is where the name comes from, which I thought was interesting because for some reason I always thought it was supposed to be like Choco, like chocolate because of the brownie red color that it has. Please tell me I am not the only person that thought that. But no, the name is from the region <laughs> that it originates from. So I'm just gonna give a quick overview of what the plant looks like. This plant is incredibly striking. It has this deep green velvety, and it is, it does feel like quite satiny or velvety. It's very soft. Um, so it has that typical heart leaf velvet philodendron kind of look. And then what makes this plant unique is the red backs. So it has these red backs, uh, as you can see on some of the leaves, I think you can see better on this one. But what happens is that the plant has the red backs when it's young and then as it matures, it loses those red backs, which is kind of unfortunate, but the front of the leaf is still so beautiful that it doesn't bother me too much. This one, I can definitely see the red diminishing in the newest, the most mature leaf that it has. As for the petioles, it's kind of bumpy and it's a dark burgundy color, um, but they're not hairy and they are round. Now, something that I really wanted to talk about, and this is going to relate to the care as well, is the growth pattern. So a lot of people think that you do not need to put philodendron El Choco Red on a pole, and I really disagree with that. I think that the reason that I'm able to get this type of leaf in less than a year from a baby plant, I'll insert, um, I'll insert a clip or photos of when I first got this plant. I actually did a live stream unboxing um, about a year ago now. And the plant was absolutely tiny, um, so it's matured a lot for me. And I really attribute that to the moss pole. Um, it does, like the aerial roots are not as robust as a lot of aerial roots on my other types of philodendron, but it does grow into the moss pole. It does cling on. You can see I have a fresh aerial right there growing into the moss. And there are aerial roots that go all throughout the moss. Like he has definitely been grabbing on and climbing up and just really taking advantage of this pole. And I honestly do think that that is what has helped this plant grow so much. So I will swear by putting this plant on a moss pole. I don't care what nobody says. Okay, I'm kind of getting all over the place in this video, but I, like I said, I received this plant about a year ago now and it was very tiny. This is actually an impulse buy for me. Uh, this was not a plant that was ever really on my radar or on my wish list. I just, I just didn't really feel that drawn to it. And even when I got it, I grew it for several months before I really started falling in love with it. Once I put it on a moss pole and once it started really growing is when I was just like, oh my goodness, this is absolutely incredible. And now it's probably, I'm gonna say, it's so hard to choose favorites in my collection. Definitely top five. Like I love this plant so much, you guys. It's just been so rewarding to grow and so freaking beautiful. I could just stare at it. I love it so much. I think that it's actually trying to put out a new growth point. Let's see if we can peel off. Maybe this will be satisfying. Oh, I can see it's got a new growth point coming in. Okay, how do we get this off? Oh, do you see that? Oh my gosh. Oh, so we're gonna get another new leaf. Oh man, this thing grows like a beast. She's always growing. Oh, 
Okay, check out that fresh growth point. Ooh, I will keep you guys updated on the growth. So like I said, I couldn't really find a lot of information when it came to the origins or the history besides where the plant grows. Um, there was a plant that was similar that was described in like 1889 or something like that, but then there was confusion with the names. The nomenclature is just so confusing sometimes. So um, I think that there's still a lot of question as to what the actual name is of this plant. And for a while, a lot of people were calling it Pseudovaricosum or even thinking that Philodendron El Choco Red was a type of varicosum, which I... I have no idea like why, where that comes from, because to me, this looks nothing like my philodendron varicosum. And I know that there are a lot of different forms of varicosum, but they just are not similar in my opinion. Like they're both incredible plants, but they just look very different to me. So apparently the name that is being proposed now, it's not official, but the name that is being proposed um, and is under review, I believe for this plant uh, is philodendron triumphans. I guess that could possibly become the official name in the future. So if you hear that name kicking around, then that is referring to this plant. I did find a really interesting article that went through a lot of like history, a lot of information about tons of different philodendrons. So I can link that in the description box if you're into like informative botanical blog posts, which I love reading through. Like I could just scroll through and read those forever. And there's tons of, tons of gorgeous photos. Um, so I'll link that if you are interested. Okay, so now I'm going to jump into some of the specific care for this plant and how I have grown this plant to be so beautiful in a relatively short amount of time. So this plant lives in my IKEA greenhouse cabinet, so it does get quite high humidity. However, I am going to, to be moving it out soon, so I am going to be experimenting with lower humidity for this plant. Um, but as for now, it's mostly been grown in my IKEA cabinet at around 85% humidity and under grow lights, so it gets artificial light pretty much only it does get a little bit of natural light but mostly artificial light from the grow light and that does run for how long does that run for i believe i have it running for nine hours a day right now and it seems to be very happy with that like i said it's always growing now because i have been growing this plant in a controlled environment it does make the care relatively easy for me so when it comes to watering i typically water this about once a week but that's gonna that's gonna vary for everyone. Um, you can't follow a specific schedule. You just have to look at your plant. You need to go by what your specific plant is telling you because everyone's conditions are gonna be different. So for this plant, I let it dry out like completely. As you can see, it's in quite a small pot and it doesn't really have a lot of room in there because the moss pole takes up a big portion of it. Um, so this dries out in about a week since it's living in such high humidity. And I really do wait until this is pretty much bone dry before I water. And what I do to water is I throw this in the shower. I'm sure if you watch my plant shower videos, you've seen me water this thing in the shower because I feel like I do it in every video, but um, I just shower it through and that drenches the moss pole as well. And this moss pole pretty much stays moist until the next time I water, just because it is living in a higher humidity environment. If this was outside of the cabinet, or I guess when it's outside of the cabinet, I'm going to have to wet this moss pole between waterings but since it is in those conditions I just have to water this whole thing once a week it's so easy and to fertilize I use my Osmo coat uh, slow release fertilizer so that when I shower this thing through the plant is getting fertilized as well so everything is just so easy breezy I'm finding that I'm using the Osmo coat slow release fertilizer m with more of my plants because it's just it's just such an easy way to ensure that the plant is getting fertilizer and I find that it works really well. All my plants seem happy. So that is what this guy is on. I am just on the tail end of dealing with thrips in my life, in my home. So this plant was treated for thrips. I was spraying it with the Dr. Doom Go Green Botanics and it was completely fine. It didn't damage the leaf at all. So if that's something that you're worried about, I have not experienced any damage with the Dr. Doom or with a neem oil solution. It's been completely fine. Also with um, isopropyl alcohol added into the neem oil, um, it, the leaves seem pretty resilient. I haven't ever had a specific pest problem on this, this plant in general. Um, I just kind of prevent whatever's going on from spreading to this plant but it's a philodendron, so I would be concerned about the typical ones such as spider mites and thrips. I mean, fungus gnats, but I don't really care about fungus gnats, honestly. 
I really do think that the key points for this guy are moss pole and as high as humidity as you're able to give. When this plant was small, I did have it living outside of the cabinet and I was having some problems with the leaves getting choked out, um, like getting caught in the petiole. So I am a little nervous to take this plant out of the cabinet, but I'm just gonna try to keep the humidity as high as I can and that's all I can really do. So that's what I suggest. I feel like lighting is pretty flexible with this plant. Um, since it is like a darker leaf, it can probably do with being on the low to medium end of things. However, it has been appreciating being under the grow light. So I feel like you can kind of get away with a range of lighting. As you can see, I do have this yellow guy down here. I've been waiting um until my leaves are pretty much gone before i remove them it honestly just comes down to personal preference i don't think that there's anything wrong with cutting leaves off like i'd be okay with cutting this off right now but yeah it's just it's normal for the lower leaves to yellow this is a very juvenile leaf as you can see so it's just putting that energy into growing these bigger beautiful leaves for me Oh yeah, the last thing I will quickly mention is the soil mix, which is the same mix that I use for almost all the plants in my collection and it works great. So I'll put it on the screen, but it's just orchid bark, cocoa coir, perlite, uh, and pumice, I believe. I might have some charcoal in here, I don't remember but that's like the main, um, I can link my soil mix video down below if you have not seen that yet, but it works great for all of my philodendron for sure. So I guess that is about it. So let me know if you have any questions and I'll be sure to answer you down in the comments. I hope that this video was helpful or just nice to watch. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up if you liked it. Also, let me know what plants you want me to do a care video on next. I will be doing my Alocasia Silver Dragon because it's another one that I get a ton of questions about, but if there's anything else, just leave it down below. All right, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye. Try